Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will talk about uh, hydrogels. I hope uh, you are familiar with what hydrogels are, but we will discuss them uh, with the context of tissue engineering. We will first look at the fundamentals associated with hydrogels and uh, we will discuss as to how we can prepare these hydrogels and what materials are used for these and so on. Okay. So, what are hydrogels first? Water, yeah, as long as it can absorb and retain water, it is a hydrogel. So, that is the uh, basic requirement for something to be a hydrogel. Uh, it is properly defined as uh, interconnected networks of uh, macroscopic dimensions, which consists of hydrophilic or uh, amphiphilic building blocks that are rendered insoluble due to the presence of crosslinks. So, the initial monomers or the building blocks which are used are actually soluble in water. But you create cross links and as the uh, degree of cross linking increases at some point this uh, macroscopic material becomes uh, uh, insoluble in water and that is called as a hydrogel. So, this kind of a uh, network can actually absorb and retain a lot of water. Okay. So, these can be formed from soluble monomers or multifunctional polymers. You can also use insoluble microscopic entities such as uh, nanofibrils or nano and micro particles. So, which would have initially been formed using hydrophilic molecules and you have these uh, nanostructures or microstructures which can then be fused together or interacted together to form hydrogels. Yeah. What, what does it form crosslinks with? Okay, we will discuss that. So, crosslinking uh, is one of the major aspects when it comes to uh, creating hydrogels. So, it depends on the polymer you are using and there are different types of crosslinking. We will talk about that in this lecture. So, Crosslinks are uh, physical or chemical. These are technically the junction points where uh, two polymeric chains or microscopic objects uh, cross over. So, this is general, the hydrogels are generally used at a temperature higher than the glass transition temperature. So, what is glass transition temperature? Polymer chemistry you would have studied glass transition temperature or even Met basic material science, material technology courses. Okay, use the use English to define what it could be. Glass transition temperature. Okay, above this temperature, the material will behave like a rubber, whereas below it, it will be a solid. It will be like a glass. Okay, so from glassy stature it will move to a rubbery st uh, stature. So, that transition happens at a temperature called as a glass transition temperature. So, hydrogels will be used at temperatures higher than the glass transition temperature, so that it will have a rubbery uh, texture. If it is used, if it is uh, below the glass transition temperature it would be glassy and it cannot be used in a biomedical application. Okay. So, they can absorb a lot of water because uh, there are many hydrophilic functional groups on the polymer backbone which is used for preparing these hydrogels and the resistance to dissolution itself happens because of the crosslink density between the network chains. So, you have many crosslinks as I was saying as the crosslinking increases you uh, create an insoluble um, hydrogel which has the ability to withstand the environment. So, why hydrogels? Why should we use hydrogels? We have talked about a few uh, scaffold fabrication techniques. Where like, we are. I specifically am discussing hydrogels. Why do you think hydrogels are important? And this is one of the most well-studied uh, systems when it comes to tissue engineering scaffolds. Why has this attracted so much attention? Okay. Uh, yeah, it can be used for drug delivery. I'm asking asking about in tissue engineering. Why do you think hydrogels are important? Okay. So, uh, the uh, application of wound healing, it will provide a moist environment which can help in the healing process. 
Okay. But that is not the only application where hydrogels are used, it is used in other tissue engineering applications as well. Uh, can you think of reasons why? Okay. So, the idea is uh, any time we use a material the goal is to emulate what is there in nature. right? Uh, the hydrogel has a structural and compositional similarity to ECM. So, that is why uh, hydrogels are uh, preferred. Like. So, they have uh, the ECM actually behaves like a hydrogel, it looks and uh, has the properties similar to that of a hydrogel. It also has extensive framework for cell proliferation and survival. So, anytime you use a scaffold, it should be able to support cell adhesion and cell proliferation, right. So, uh, hydrogels usually have good ability to do that. They are also well studied, there is good understanding and there is potential for engineering this, so that we can actually improve uh, cell attachment, molecular response, structural integrity, uh, biodegradability, biocompatibility and solute transport. Yeah, so, uh, these are actually uh, crucial factors because uh, for example, for example, with respect to solute transport, if you have a scaffold uh, which is a 3D structure, uh, even without vascularization there has to be some amount of solute transport, only then the cells can survive at the initial phase. Assuming that vascularization eventually forms, you still need to have good efficient solute transport initially, right. So, for that reason hydrogel would be a good uh, material where you would have a very rapid solute transport. So, that helps uh, the cells which are seeded. So, uh, as I said hydrogels are created through cross linking procedure. So, what happens is the subunits uh, form a network of macroscopic dimensions. Initially the subunits start growing and branch out, but remain soluble and there is, they, disper they are dispersed in the solution. But as the number of cross links increase, you are going to have clusters which are forming and these clusters are going to grow in size. Eventually, this, these clusters become infinite in size in the sense that they uh, start interacting enough that they will form something like a gel. So, at this point uh, gelation happens, so this is called the gelling point. So, this gelation could uh, happen due to different reasons, it could be because of the polymer concentration itself or the cross linker concentration, temperature, there are many factors or pH, there are many factors which can actually trigger gelation. Okay. So, and the factor which triggers gelation uh, probably depends based on uh, the type of polymer you are using and the type of cross linking you are going to be performing. Okay. So, uh, all subunits are uh, linked to each other at multiple points, so that there is uh, strong interaction between these um, subunits which have been used for preparing these hydrogels. So, the cross links ensure that they maintain the structural and mechanical integrity and prevents dissolution in an aqueous environment. The hydrogel is inherently heterogeneous, it actually has when you put it in a water medium, it is going to have solid rich regions which are distributed within an liquid environment. Because when you have a hydrogel what happens is uh, it will actually swell significantly when you put it in water. So, there are going to be regions where the polymer is present which would be the solid rich regions and the gaps are going to be filled by the water or buffer or the media which you are using. So, that is going to be the liquid environment in which this solid is present. So, water can actually freely diffuse or be loosely bound or tightly associated to the network depending on where it is present. Okay. So, if it is present close to the uh, points where it can form hydrogen bonds, then it will be very closely bound, very strongly bound or it could just be loosely bound uh, like what is being adhered to the surface which can just be blotted off with a paper or it could be freely, uh, uh, freely diffusing through the pores which are present in the hydrogen. Okay. So, uh, the solid like material would, uh, so this actually behaves like a solid because it has infinite viscosity, it would actually not flow. Right, so, hydrogel will not flow. So, it, it would have an infinite viscosity and uh, it also has defined shape and modulus. So, this makes it a solid, but it also has liquid like properties because sol solute can diffuse fr freely and uh, this helps in the solute transport. The only condition is the so solute size has to be smaller than the average mesh size. So, mesh size would be the size uh, of the between these cross links not exactly the pore size, but like size between the cross links. Okay. So, you might have a non-porous hydrogel as well, it is possible to prepare non-porous hydrogels, hydrogels can have different porosity. 
So, mesh size is not purely dependent on porosity, it is dependent on the cross links. Yes, it will be. That is why I said average mesh size. Mesh size. So, it will be different, but uh, you would have you, you can prepare it with the reasonable distribution. So, if you are going to have chemical cross linking, for example, depending on the functional group's density, you are going to have similar uh, cross linking, right. So, you can alter cross linking concentration, sorry, cross linker concentration to get uniform cross linking and so on. So, the physical structure itself depends on the starting monomer or the macromer which you are using, right. So, you, and it also uh, will be defined by the synthesis procedure and the fabrication methods that you are going to be using. The solvent conditions in which uh, these hydrogels are prepared are, will also influence the uh, structure of this hydrogel. So, after your hydrogel is prepared while you are using there is going to be some amount of degradation and uh, there is going to be mechanical loading depending on where you are being where you are using it. So, even cartilage people use hydrogels, right. So, people use different kinds of hydrogels for cartilage repair. So, there you are going to have significant mechanical loading. So, this is going to cause uh, damage to the tissue so and the hydrogel. So, that that could actually change the physical structure of the hydrogel. So, the cross link structure is characterized by the junctions which could be either chemical linkages or uh, permanent or temporary uh, physical entanglements or microcrystallite formations or weak interactions like hydrogen bonding. Okay, these are all the different uh, things which can actually be present as the cross linking structure. So, when you are talking about the network, uh, the hydrogel network, there are different parameters which are usually uh, described. So, the three parameters which are very commonly described are the polymer volume fraction in a swollen state. So, when you uh, take a hydrogel and um, immerse it in PBS or water, it is going to swell till it reaches equilibrium, right. Uh, at the point of equilibrium, you are going to have some fraction which is polymer and the rest is going to be water. So, depending on the uh, water fraction, the polymer fraction, you know what is the swelling of the material. So, this is one parameter which is used. Average molecular weight between the cross links is another parameter which is used to define the density of cross linking. And the other aspect is the measure of distance between the cross links which is the mesh size. So, this will help us in understanding what solutes can pass through the hydrogel and what cannot, okay. So, these are the parameters which are used. So, while I was describing this, I said that uh, swelling reaches an equilibrium, right. Why do you think it reaches an equilibrium? Why not just keep swelling? When, when a hydrogel is placed in water, let us say there is uh, excess amount of water. So, you say I let us say I take 10 grams of a hydrogel and place it in uh, 500 kilograms of water. So, there is a lot of water it can absorb. Why does not it keep absorbing it? What is actually preventing it? Yeah. So, it has uh, limits for, to, for the points where it can actually uh, adhere to water and uh, also there are forces which act against uh, swelling. Right. So, your the number of cross links are going to prevent uh, the hydrogel from swelling, right. So, you are going to have uh, water which is coming in which is forcing the hydrogel to swell and the cross links which are trying to hold the hydrogel together. These two are uh, counteracting forces and at some point these forces are going to reach equilibrium, right. So, that is also going to play a role in uh, how much the hydrogel can swell. Solute transport is one of the most critical parameters which is used for uh, designing a hydrogel. So, the uh, here this actually defines uh, the mass transfer parameters for nutrients, gases, waste products, bioactive agents and uh, other molecules which would be involved in the uh, during cell culture and cell growth. So, uh, in uh, solute transport convection usually does not play a role. Uh, because when you keep this in a in a physiological environment, you are actually not going to have flow in this direction, right. So, convection will not play a major role uh, unless if your pore size is very large. So, if your pore sizes are very large, then there can actually be convective forces within these uh, pores even when you are in a static environment, okay. So, diffusion is the driving uh, transport phenomena. And uh, there are different factors which can actually influence diffusion. 
uh, being mesh size, pH and temperature. Okay. So, all these can actually affect uh, the mesh size of sorry affect the diffusion parameters for in which uh, which helps the solute transport. Okay. So, this basically talks about the types of hydrogels and uh, we will look at some of the polymers uh, which are used uh, for preparing natural and synthetic uh, hydrogels. So, poly, uh, there are, this is not a comprehensive list. So, you can actually prepare hydrogels using many, many types of polymers as long as it is hydrophilic and it can absorb and retain water, you can try to prepare a hydrogel using that. Only, uh, only thing would be to optimize the cross-linking procedure, so that it actually forms a stable hydrogel. Okay. So, what I have listed here is just a brief introduction for what are all the materials that are used. So, basically you can classify them as two things, one is the natural polymers which are used and the synthetic polymers that are used. So, natural polymers uh, such as uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, alginate, pectin, carrageenan, uh, chitosan, polylysine, collagen, um, carboxymethyl chitin, carboxymethyl cellulose, dextran, agarose, pololan, all these have actually been studied for preparing hydrogels. For different applications, people have tested these. And uh, so, people are uh, people have also used these along with the uh, synthetic hydrogels, synthetic polymers to get desirable mechanical properties and degradation properties. Okay. So, uh, amongst these they, are, uh, they have classified it as anionic, cationic, amphipathic and uh, neutral polymers depending on the charge of it. So, the polymers which are used uh, that are anionic would be hydro, uh, hyaluronic acid and uh, alginic acid or alginate and so on. And you can have cationic polymers like uh, chitosan which also can be used for preparing uh, hydrogels. So, these charges actually play a role when it comes to uh, cell at, uh, attachment and uh, cellular interactions. Okay. So, you can design hydrogels using these. And uh, you also have neutral polymers like dextran, uh, agarose and pululan which have also been used for uh, preparing hydrogels. So, when it comes to synthetic polymers again the list is endless. So, whatever is shown here is, uh, is a very small uh, fraction of what you would find in literature. You can use many, many things. So, polyethylene glycol is one of the more well studied hydrogel systems. Uh, so, is uh, polyhema. So, these are materials which have been studied uh, extensively for uh, different applications and people have shown uh, the properties of hydrogels using these uh, materials. So, combinations of natural and synthetic have also been studied and uh, here are just a few which have been uh, studied and which you can find in literature. Okay. So, uh, in natural polymers the other way to uh, look at the categorization would be to talk about what type of a uh, molecule it is. One uh, you have protein based uh, molecules and polysaccharide based molecules which can be used. So, whatever they have listed here uh, some are uh, uh, polymers, but collagen uh, is a protein, polylysine is a polypeptide and so on. And you could have uh, you could actually prepare hydrogels using protein based uh, materials or polysaccharide based materials. Okay. And all these have very good uh, water retention properties. So, uh, based on the method of preparation, hydrogels can be classified as homopolymer, copolymer, multipolymer or interpenetrating polymer network hydrogels. Homopolymers are the ones where you have a single type of hydrophilic monomer which is used and it is cross-linked to prepare the hydrogel. Uh, copolymer is two or more monomeric units are used uh, to prepare the hydrogels. And, uh, Multipolymer at least uses three or more co-monomers reacting with each other to form the hydrogels. Interpenetrating network, uh, interpenetrating polymer networks are slightly different from multipolymer. So here also uh, there are more than one polymers which are used. However, what is done is uh, the first polymer network is formed initially, and the second network is formed after following the initial network. So, thereby there is an interpenetrating network. The first network and the second network are not covalently attached to each other, they just are interacting with each other. So, this is why it is called as an interpenetrating polymer network. 
There are also things like double network hydrogels and many other types of hydrogels. So, people have tried to do these to alter the mechanical properties and degradation properties of the hydrogels. So, based on the nature of cross linking you can classify them as uh, physical hydrogels and chemical hydrogels. Uh, physical hydrogels basically involves uh, physical interactions like molecular entanglement, ionic interactions or hydrogen bonding uh, whereas, uh, chemical hydrogels actually have cross linkers which form covalent bonds. And uh, examples for physical uh, hydrogel would be gelatin or agar and chemical hydrogels would be PMMA, uh, polyhema and so on. Based on the charge of the building block, uh, hydrogels can be classified as neutral, anionic, cationic or uh, amphilytic. So, all these uh, have their own advantages depending on the application people try to use different things. So, when we talk about hydrogels, swelling is the most important parameter we are looking for, right. So, because it can actually absorb a lot of water and that is one of the most desirable properties of a hydrogel. So, uh, what does this mean? So, when one or more uh, highly electronegative atoms are present, what happens is uh, there is charge asymmetry which um, uh, promotes hydrogen bonding with water. So, thereby you have a lot of water which is retained by this hydrogen. So, this uh, hydrophilic material can absorb a lot of water when it is completely dry. A dry hydrogel is called as a zero gel and uh, when you put, place it in water it will start swelling and absorbing a lot of water. So, by definition uh, the water must constitute at least 10 percent of the total weight of a material to for it to be called, uh, called a hydrogel. So, that is actually a very small number most hydrogels actually absorb a lot more than 10 percent. So, in some cases the water content can actually exceed more than 95 percent of the total weight or volume and uh, these hydrogels are considered to be super absorbent. So, uh, the hydrogels that we prepare in our lab can actually absorb uh, anywhere between 2 to 10 times its weight. So, depending on the application we can actually prepare different kinds of uh, hydrogels. So, uh, to understand uh, and quantify uh, swelling uh, hydrogel swelling a term called degree of swelling or swelling ratio is used. So, this is calculated as wet weight minus dry weight divided by dry, uh, dry weight times 100. Okay. So, you just uh, take the hydrogel. So, there are different ways you can do it you can look at swelling kinetics which is basically taking the dry hydrogel putting it in buffer or water and measuring uh, its weight after a certain time intervals to see how actually the swelling progresses or you can look at only the equilibrium swelling. So, you take it and place it in water leave it for like 2 hours and then take it out and see what is the final uh, state in which it is present. So, in, uh, in some most cases uh, people want hydrogels that can swell very rapidly right. So, there can also be specific needs where hydrogels do not swell at certain conditions, but uh, the hydrogels which are generally prepared swell very quickly and within an hour they reach equilibrium. So, why is this factor degree of swelling important? Why do we need to measure this as a part of characterization? It gives us how much weight it can retain. Okay. So, it, it will tell us how much water it can retain, but more than that uh, from an application standpoint it helps us understand uh, the solute diffusion through the hydrogel and uh, also the properties of surface and uh, properties in the surface mobility on, on the material and also the mechanical property. Because uh, you are going to be using this material in its swell and state right. So, you need to understand what the uh, mechanic how the mechanical properties can uh, be altered while the swelling happens. So, those factors can be identified when with this value. So, there are many uh, hydrogels which are very highly swollen. Uh, some of the hydrogels are listed here cellulose, uh, polyvinyl alcohol, polyethylene glycol. So, what are uh, what is common between these uh, molecules? They are all polymers, huge polymers. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are all polymers, fine, but uh, why does that mean they have to be highly swollen hydrogels? So, I am trying to say, I, I, trying to I am asking you what property of all these three makes them to form highly swollen hydrogels. Hydrogen 
Hydrogen bonding with water is possible, but what is the structural feature which causes the hydrogen bonding with water? Hydroxyl groups. So, they have a lot of OH groups. Okay. So, that is why you have uh, makes them highly hydrophilic and they can actually swell a lot and absorb a lot of water. Okay. So, there are also moderately swollen hydrogels like polyhema and uh, copolymerization can be done to uh, optimize uh, the swelling ratios to get desired swelling ratios using two different materials. So, while you are preparing hydrogels uh, the mesh size, shape, swelling, permeability characters all will depend on the method of preparation itself. So, the method of preparation can uh, be based on chemical or physical cross linking. You can also have graft polymerization and radiation cross linking. So, uh, which can cause either chemical cross linking or physical cross linking depending on how uh, the polymer which is being used. So, the advantage of using physical cross linking is no cross linker is needed. Any time you add additional chemicals, it can cause problems, right. So, it the cross linker could be toxic, although your material might not be toxic, your cross linker could be toxic, or there could be excess cross linker which could have other adverse effects. Even if it is not toxic, it could have other biological uh, effects which are unintended. So, you would, would not uh, want that. So, physical cross linking does not require this cross linker, makes it very safe that way. So, you know for sure that the material you are using is the only thing which you are putting inside the body. So, it is also relatively easy to form. Um, however, the mechanical strength is low for most of the physical cross linking because these are just weak interactions, right. So, the common physical cross linkings which are used are ionic interactions and the hydrogen bonds. It can also be caused created using heating and cooling cycles and crystallization. So, ionic interactions and hydrogen bonds you would understand what it is. So, heating and cooling cycles and crystallization of polymers is done uh, using this kind of a pro process. So, what happens is in a heating and cooling cycle uh, you end up forming these kinds of coils. So, when uh, when you heat and cool. So, you keep doing this uh, cycle multiple times these coils are going to be formed and finally, uh, in the second step you do the same heating and cooling along with ions like sodium ions or potassium ions. So, these are then stabilized. So, thereby forming physical cross linking which uh, forms the hydrogens. So, this is usually done for PEG, PLA, uh, PEO and uh, so on. Okay. So, uh, crystallization is another common method which is used for cross linking PVA and xanthan. So, what is done here is it is freezing and thawing. So, the polymer solution is taken and it is frozen and then thawed and uh, it, this is repeated multiple times. So, that uh, the uh, uh, this coils are formed and finally, you freeze it. So, that these coils interact with each other and form a very strong uh, hydrogel. So, uh, crystallization is actually a technique which can provide <coughs> reasonably good mechanical strength. So, in many cases uh, crystallization can even give mechanical strength better than uh, your chemical cross linking. So, chemical methods uh, consists of forming irreversible covalent uh, cross linking. The chemical uh, cross linking is basically a direct reaction between the polymer or its branches uh, with a bifunctional component with small molecular weight which is the cross linking agent or the cross linker. So, you would use something which is bifunctional so that what happens is one side of the functional group will interact with one polymer chain and the other side of the functional group other functional group will interact with the other polymer chain thereby it forms the cross links. So, glutaraldehyde is one such molecule which is very commonly used. Okay. So, you have two aldehyde groups. So, it can easily react with amines and um, other molecules. So, it will immediately form cross links. Okay. So, that is a very common cross linker which is used. So, uh, chemical cross linking methods uh, involve uh, cross linking of polymer chains themselves which is what I am talking about with respect to glutaraldehyde. You can also have grafting where polymerization of a monomer is performed on the uh, backbone of a preformed polymer. So, you might just be forming uh, branches using other uh, polymeric uh, other monomeric mo molecule and um, cause this polymerization to create a hydrogen. Okay. So, these are some of the chemical processes which are used. Uh, if you have depending on the functional group you have you would choose 
what kind of cross linking you can uh, perform. Okay. So, if you have a vinyl group then you can use radical polymerization, if you have carboxylic acid then you can do something called carbodiimide coupling. So, carbodiimide coupling is where carboxylic acid group is activated using a carbodiimide and uh, this activated carboxyl group can then intra, uh, can react with uh, uh, either alcohol groups uh, like hydroxyl groups or with uh, um, amine groups. So, with amine groups it will form amide bonds and with uh, hydroxyl groups it can form ester bonds. So, once you have this activated carboxyl group it is easier to uh, cause reactions. Amines are actually uh, easy to work with uh, using Schiff's base reactions with aldehydes or you can use carbodiimide coupling to interact with carboxyl groups. Uh, hydroxyl groups can also be used if you have hydroxyl groups you can uh, activate these hydroxyl groups and create cross linking using uh, carbonyl uh, diimidazole and sulfhydryl groups which might be present can be uh, in used for chemical cross linking using Michaels addition or disulfide bond formations. So, this basically summarizes all the physical and chemical uh, hydrogels with the different cross linking techniques. I am not going to go into the details of everything this anyways this is just I am putting it there for you to look up uh, while I upload the slides. So, with that uh, we come to the end of this lecture, uh, we will talk about uh, stimuli responsive hydrogels in the next class, thank you.